Okay, Google, call mom. What's up, YouTube? Jason here with Bite My Bits. I bring to you my weekly news bits, mostly weekly, except for last week, and I already explained that. By the way, I still have blue stuff in my ear, so I'm still on some medication. It's getting better. Anyways, moving on to the news. The first thing I want to talk about today are hidden messages in YouTube videos that are popping up on the internet. Now, they're basically putting these in audible commands, you know, like, okay, Google, you know, go to said website, and this particular website that they're sending these people to are malicious, and they're downloading viruses to these Android devices. So, kind of something to look out for. It's kind of an interesting tactic to infect somebody with some viruses, but still something interesting to look for. Uh, they say that, I mean, you can hear it if you pay attention and you actually, you know, listen for it. You can recognize the commands, but for the most part, you're just watching a video or, or listening to some YouTube music or something like that. It, you don't really notice it. Um, your or your phone notices it, but you don't notice it. That's a little kind of an interesting way to infect somebody with some viruses. So for the next up, I want to go over this revolutionary new airplane design concept that is being designed right now that is essentially going to be able to fly almost completely in outer space. I mean, it still needs oxygen, but that's part of the design is that they're designing this new engine that does not require onboard uh, uh, oxygen to be stored in order for it to work. Instead, it uses the, uh, the oxygen out of the atmosphere and then somehow, you know, warms it up or whatever it needs to do for that such thin oxygen up there. And it's able to fly from what they're saying based off their concept. Now, again, this is not tested or anything, still in design phase. They're saying they could fly anywhere in the world in just four hours. That's pretty cool. Of course, it's going to be super expensive probably, but hey, if this thing becomes a thing, then maybe it'll get cheaper. Still pretty interesting. Obviously, it's probably only going to be used for military use, I would assume. I don't see any kind of like passenger jet, you know, flying in the atmosphere, in the upper atmosphere and going somewhere in four. I just don't see that happening, especially because they can't make it too big probably. So I, I don't know. I don't really see it happening, but still an interesting technology. And if it ever did roll out to consumers, it would probably take longer to go through airport security than it would to actually get to your destination. So, yeah. Next up, we have Kim.com. If you guys don't remember, Kim.com had Mega upload a long time ago, got shut down, got raided. Uh, he's now, I think, in hiding. He's fighting being extradited to the US, I think, or something. So he's going through and has been going through a lot of legal battle battles based around his previous website that pretty much everybody used to upload pirated stuff. Now he is saying that he wants to reactivate and launch Mega Upload again. So that's kind of cool if you're into that sort of thing. Not saying that everything in Mega Upload is pirated content. It's probably a lot of legitimate stuff and legitimate files that people need to use, you know, a service like Mega Upload for. I still think it's kind of cool that he's just saying, screw you, shut me down. I'll just start back up again in a few years. No big deal. And he is also saying that it's going to be more anonymous where people uh, can use Bitcoins for something. He's not saying exactly what for just yet, but definitely something to keep an eye out for. If you use the service before, you might want to check it out again. Speaking of anonymous, I will cover just some of the basics on this one, and I'm going to link this in the description so you can read more on how this new network works. But basically, these researchers from MIT have are designing a new type of anonymous network that allows people to surf anonymously and fast, like 10 times faster than, than the Tor browser is. So uh, if you guys have ever used Tor, you know that it's slow. You know, I mean, you're routing through multiple computers to get where you need to go, I mean, there's just bound to be a bottleneck somewhere in your path that's going to slow you down. That's just kind of the nature of the beast when it comes to the, to the Tor browser, to the Tor network. So this new network basically sends out these, these data packets and, and random whatever, and they go to multiple computers and they get put back together in a different way. So I'll link in the description so you can kind of read or see like how this all works and how they design it and you know what the concept is so you can understand it more in depth, but the idea essentially is a faster and anonymous network that they're claiming that as long as one server is untouched then the network is unbreakable now is anything really unbreakable not really nothing's unbreakable but it is from their eyes completely secure by the way it's designed because of how it breaks up packets and keeps people anonymous so that'll be kind of interesting to see that developed and launched and i'll just 
kind of see, kind of want to see how fast it is. I personally don't use Tor. I don't have any reason to use Tor. I do use a VPN, but I don't really use Tor. So I don't know. I'll still check it out, I guess. And now we have this new camera that, well, honestly, is fascinating to me. I mean, it's just, it's really fascinating. Basically, this new camera, they're saying that it catches, you know, lights from all different areas. Like everything that it can see, it captures light in almost a holographic form just by just by pointing at it, just like a regular camera. But it captures uh, these these lights coming from everywhere and it allows people to change everything in post like uh, focal points, depth of field. I mean, they're saying that this kind of technology is basically gonna render green screens redundant. So you don't even need them if you're shooting something that requires special effects for you to add or remove something in the background or whatever later. So that is, an interesting concept I and mean, it, it does this at 300 frames per second and the kicker here is that if you want to rent it out it's hundred and twenty five thousand dollars to rent out so wow it makes me really wonder how much the damn thing even costs just to buy it but still pretty interesting technology that I really want to see how far it can go and what it can do and what it would be used for. If, if, if you guys are familiar with raw cameras, like uh, you take raw video or raw, raw footage, it's kind of similar to that except way more advanced. Um, so yeah, definitely something that I'm gonna look, I'm going to follow just because I'm totally into movies and that movie technology just really interests me. Okay, so for this next one is not really a groundbreaking technology, so to speak. I mean, it's just testing for things like malaria or you know cancer or whatever, but Chemists out of Ohio State University, they're developing this paper strips, right, that can be produced for like 50 cents per strip. And the whole idea here is in developing countries or countries where they don't have access to doctors or can't afford access to doctors on a regular basis, but they're at high risk for things like malaria or cancer, these strips basically are allowing them to put a drop of blood on the strip and mail it to a doctor. And then if, when the doctors get it or the processing facility gets it they run it through all the tests they do all the tests that they you know are saying they're going to do which is you know cancer malaria or whatever zika virus i don't know whatever they want to test for they can test for whatever they want to and that they find something positive then they can get in contact with the person who sent it in and get the medical attention if they don't find anything they don't say anything to them they're just like whatever but if they do find something it allows them to reach out and take whatever appropriate action is necessary that's kind of cool because there are a lot of people who don't have access to these medical facilities. They can't go see a doctor. They can't, you know, have their blood drawn just all the time to be tested for, you know, common diseases, even though they're in areas where these diseases are very common. Or really the need for a large amount of doctors. I mean, these strips can basically take on the workload of, you know, a thousand doctors going out and collecting blood when all they have to do is send it in and you only need one processing facility full of just people who don't really have to be, you know, doctors. They could just be trained to handle a you know machine. Just stick it in, hit process, type in the information, and go. Kind of an interesting take. I don't know. All right, guys. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for tuning in. I definitely appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Like and follow me on Twitter at underscore bite my bits. Have a good day.